Hey everybody and welcome back. Today I am going to be unboxing and showing you the new iPhone 13 Pro Max, which I just picked up in Sierra Blue. Now I was a little bit uh, confused by some of the wording on the pre-order page when I ordered this. Um, and maybe it was just because I was sleepy because it was kind of early in the morning. But I um, apparently I ordered this without a SIM card. So I'm not sure exactly what the process is going to be or what I'm going to have to do. So I'll probably have to edit some chunks of this video together uh, later on. But let's get to it and see what's in the box. Okay, so again, here's the box. Um, again, this is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So it's got the three lenses, as you'll see. And then on the back, we've got a little open in strip here. Oops, pick that up later. Come on, come on. Oh, is there another, oh, there's another one down at the bottom. All right, so there's the phone inside. Looks lovely. So this shows your mute switches over there, your volume up and down buttons, power buttons over here. Really nice clean look. I mean, I'm gonna have a case on this so I won't see the color of this phone anyway, but I've kind of decided within the last year or so that I'm done buying things in boring colors. So I always try to get something in some kind of color. So that was kind of a little static thing. And you've got some typical paperwork inside, a little design by Apple in California. This is the uh, SIM popper tool in case you're gonna take your SIM out of your old phone and put it into your new phone. And then of course you've got the cable and this is a USB-C cable, not a regular USB cable. So it's USB-C on one end and lightning on the other end, as you can see right there. Hopefully you can see that. I think that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and turn this on, see what happens. There we go. Really is a beautiful looking phone and it's actually lighter than I expected it to be. I feel like my current phone is heavier than this. Okay, so we're gonna swipe up, select your language, select your country. All right, so now it's asking me to bring my current phone near this, so I'm gonna do that. We're gonna continue. And you're gonna point the camera at that squiggly thing. Okay. I'm going to enter this in, but I'm going to block it so you can't see it. That is high security right there. Putting my hand in front of it. It may take a few minutes to activate your phone. Well, it might take more than a few minutes since it doesn't have a SIM card in it. We'll have to see what happens. I'm not exactly sure what that process is gonna be. The person at the Apple store told me that I could use an eSIM with Verizon to get 5G service on this phone. Uh, yep, we're gonna do Face ID, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that up. The first one is complete. We're gonna do another one. Face ID is now set up. And I'm gonna go ahead and Transfer data from my old phone. We all know that none of us actually read that agreement. But somebody will, and then they'll post some really clickbaity titled article online about how you should never agree to that. But you really have no choice if you want to use the phone. Yep, I do want to continue to set this my new, make this my new phone. Oh, I don't want you seeing that. Okay, so I had to set up my credit card that's in my Apple wallet, but of course I didn't want you guys to see that, so I edited that out, but I've just gone through that process. What it did was it showed me what I already had in my wallet on my old phone, and then it asked me to put in the CVV code, which is the security code on the back. So the previous step right before this was transferring purchases from other accounts that I had on here, but I didn't wanna go look up those account passwords, so I just skipped that. For now, they're from very old accounts, so I probably don't even know what those are or care anyway. 
and now it's transferring data from my old phone to my new phone. Okay, so I guess it finished transferring the data. It didn't take anywhere near as long as it said it was going to. It was more like 20 minutes, not 45 or whatever it was saying. Um, and so now the phone has restarted. I don't know if it's doing an update or what it's doing, but we will take a look in a few minutes. Okay, so as you can see here, it is finished transferring and it has restarted and the iPhone, the new iPhone 13 says that there is no SIM card initialed. Initialed? installed. Oops, gosh, my eyes are really bad, sorry. So I am going to have to call Verizon and see about getting this uh, connected and hopefully I can do the eSIM option like the person at the Apple store said and we'll be back after that. Okay, so after quite a bit of finagling, I was actually able to get it working. Um, in fact, it's the next day now. So I called Verizon, but they couldn't do an eSIM over the phone or via customer service chat and told me that if I wanted to get a SIM, they would have to send it to me, but it would take two days to get here. So I just went to a Verizon store and had them uh, pop in a SIM, which of course was no charge. And so now the phone is working. It's on the 5G network, although currently I only have one bar on here and it's not showing 5G. It will, when you're connected to 5G, it will show 5G up there at the top. So some of the cool things about this phone compared to the old one, um, still has a 6.7 inch screen, but the screen is now um, it's got an adaptive refresh rate up to 120 hertz. So what that means is it can change the refresh rate of the screen depending on what you're doing. So when you're looking at the screen like this and it's just static, it lowers the refresh rate so that it uses less power. But then when you're doing anything that requires any kind of movement, um, it will uh, adjust the refresh rate so that it's a much smoother experience, which actually looks really cool. It's definitely noticeable versus my old phone, which was an iPhone 11 Pro Max. On the back, there are new cameras. The cameras are much better than on the old phone. And there are a lot of new features related to the, uh, the use of the cameras. So for instance, if you ever took portrait style photos, you can now do that in video as well, which is pretty cool. Um, you will notice, however, that the camera lenses do stick up past the back of the, um, sorry, let me get that into focus past the back of the, uh, the, case, you know, the, the actual phone back itself, which is kind of a drag because that means that you can never really, depending on what case you have, you can never really lie the phone flat because there's that you know, bump out on the back. So my guess is that within, you know, probably within the next generation, so maybe the iPhone 14, they'll figure out a way to incorporate those in so that they're flush with the back of the case. But the case is very nice. This is the Sierra Blue version again, and um, you know, very clean edge. You've got this sort of metallic finish around the outside, which looks very nice. The notch on the screen in the front is smaller than it used to be, so it's about 20% smaller than uh, previous versions of the iPhone. And there are some other cool features that I'm sure you either know by now or maybe don't care about or could easily find online. But I just kind of wanted to show you the process of taking it out of the box and going over a couple of the most interesting features of it. I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching. Bye.